Hi guys, today I'm going to tell you a tip that will help you save a bit of money when you're testing your water parameters in your reef tank. Okay, so one of the most common ways that you could save on reagents is by doing a low resolution tests. So if you uh, notice the sulfur, you could do 100 high resolution tests or 200 low resolution tests. But the problem with that is, is just it's, it's low resolution, right? So uh, if you really want to know what your alkalinity is and, and, and you're trying to adjust dosing and so on, you don't want to do a low resolution test where you could be off by like 0.5 dKH. So for the most part, doing the half resolution test kind of defeats the purpose of testing with a colorimetric assay, right? You do the colorimetric assay because it's accurate, but you don't want to like lose that accuracy to save on reagents. Uh, the other problem is for the magnesium and the calcium, to actually do half the assay, you have to kind of use a little spoon so that there's a little spoon that comes with the kit and, you, and you're supposed to fill it up with powder. But uh, when you're doing the low resolution test, you have to ha fill the spoon with half of the powder and it's just very hard for me to tell whether I really have half a spoon or three quarters of a spoon and, and so on. So that's not ideal. All right, so the second way that you, it seems like you're actually saving on reagents is, you know, when typically all of these colorimetric assays, uh, you have your uh, titrant here and you get one of these syringes and you're supposed to fill the syringe to one uh, mil and then you uh, you use you apply the solution drop by drop until the color changes and then often you have a bit of leftover liquid in the syringe so one one mistake that a lot of people do is they essentially take this reagent and they return it back into uh, the stock solution and you know that for if if you've trained in analytical chemistry uh, this is a big no-no because you like it's it should always be like a one way you from the stock solution to the syringe and and it's a one way one way street you, you can never put the liquid from here back into there uh, there are several reasons for that right one is if you're not careful as you're titering you might actually get some of the solution with the dye on the tip and then when you add it back here then you've contaminated this bottle uh, also if, if you're if you clean or you don't clean your your syringes you'll, you'll notice here that actually this is a syringe that i use and i normally uh, wash my uh, the tips with RODI water and if you could if you could see here you actually see that there's actually a little bit of droplets here left in the syringe so I'm gonna take a, a solution from here so now uh, uh, I have I have my water droplets mixed in with the KH solution and if I return it back then I'm essentially kind of diluting or reducing the po uh, the potency of, of this titrant so uh, it's it's not ideal you could you could do it and over time, uh, this stock solution is gonna just build up in contaminants. And you're, you're still gonna get results, but the problem is like at the end of the kit, it's hard to know. Uh, it's hard to know whether the results that you're getting are actually accurate or they're off because the solution is now contaminated. So it, it might seem that returning the leftover liquid in here back into this bottle is a good solution because you, you're, you're not wasting. But you're you are kind of you're you're wasting the resolution of the kit if you could think about it that way by essentially contaminating this bottle. So what's how could you actually save money? So it's it's actually pretty easy. So what you have to realize that when for the instructions here, right? They, uh, and, and I'm going to show you th uh, how I do this test in, in a little bit. But uh, the instructions for all of these uh, kits is okay. You have your uh, your syringe here, and you take one mil right uh, so you take one mil of the titrant uh, let me go back so you take one mil of this and you're supposed to add it drop wise and then at the end you look at the syringe and you figure out how much you've used uh, right so if, if you've if you started out from from a mil of solution here and let's say for example uh, you added uh, half a mil then you read off here that your your uh, alkalinity is 7.7. .7. If let's say you've uh, uh, the syringe is at uh, 0.4 mil, you've actually used a little bit less of the titrant. Then you could uh, uh, sorry a little bit more of the titrant. Then you read that it's 9.3. So the tip is is actually all of this where you start doesn't matter. What what really matters is 
how much of solution you actually added uh, to your uh, to your little vial here. So you don't have what I'm saying is that you don't have to start at one. You could start at point eight. You could start at point five. Although I don't recommend point five for reasons that I'll show you re uh, 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 later. Uh, but essentially, if if you if you all if every time you use point eight, then you've you've reduced the consumption of this bottle by 20%. And for most reef keepers, whose alkalinity ranges from about uh, you know, 10 to let's say seven, you starting this as 0.8 makes perfect sense. So let's not worry too much about this. Let me just show you actually what, what I mean and, and, you'll see, and, and you could follow along and, and you'll see why this makes sense. So first thing, I'm gonna do a regular test of my alkalinity uh, using the, the proper instructions. So I'm gonna put this away and let's see, hopefully the tripod is gonna work. Okay, so here I have everything that I need for my test. Uh, first step is to uh, get my syringe ready and what I like to do is just make sure that there is no droplets. Uh, this is my tank water. So I'm, I'm just gonna, for the first test, I'm gonna do it by the book. So I'm gonna fill uh, this is my tank water. Uh, you're meant to get, uh, I like to get all the water bubbles out. So there we go. And you're meant to get about four mils of tank water. There is about four mils of tank water. We're going to put it in this vial. All right, voila, here is my vial. And uh, we shake the indicator die and we put four drops. One, two, three, four. Okay, we're gonna shake this. All right, we're ready to go actually. Hold on, I'm just gonna put this under a white tissue here. It, uh, I, I like the white tissue because it helps me see the color change a bit better. Okay, so if we're gonna do the test by the book, we're meant to fill the syringe up to one So here it is. All right, so the syringe is filled to one, right? You, you, there's always gonna be a water bubble here, but that's actually because the solution is in the tip. So uh, there's still one mil of solution in here. And then you start the titration process. So uh, I usually put like a, a couple of mils uh, uh, early on just to kind of uh, Get this going, and then you do drop by drop, drop, swirl, drop, swirl, drop. There we go. Okay, I could tell that we're nearing the point. Uh, color, see it's starting to get a little bit darker. Okay, so uh, this is not pink yet. It's close to pink. I'm gonna add one drop. All right, so you see the color changed a little bit. It's, it's so I, I don't think this is the end point that, uh, here. I'm just gonna quickly look at there. So this is about uh, 0.51. I'm actually gonna add another drop and see whether the color is gonna change a little bit more. All right, now we're at pink. And what are we at here? We're at 0.5, all right? So this is the end point. I mean, uh, I, 0.5 is the end point. Sometimes it's good to just add another extra drop and see whether your the color is really gonna change uh, shade. Oh, and no, it's it's still pink. So the, the, type, the correct value here is 0.5, right? So that means that it takes half a mil, 0.5 mil of solution to cause the color change. And then what you're meant to do, uh, oh, let me just pause here. So uh, what that means is like I've, I have to test my water, I need 0.5 and, and now I have a, an additional 0.5 solution of the liquid here. Uh, and again, remember, you're not meant to, the, putting this back here 
you can do it, but I, I highly, uh, I, I don't recommend it because you, you will be contaminating your solution here. So the, the best thing to do with this liquid is to just discard it. So I'm, I'm gonna discard this here. This is my, all right, so I, this is I'm gonna toss later. Uh, and so you now you look here and 0.5, all right, 0.5, that means that my alkalinity is 7.7. .7. All right, so the question is now, can I do the same test and get the same results without wasting half of the solution in, 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 uh, in this uh, syringe? And the answer is like, yes, it, it's super easy and I'm gonna show you, but first let me just dump this. I'm gonna rinse it with the RODI water. Give this a really good rinse. Okay, gonna give it a couple of flicks. All right, so let's do another test now with my uh, other method. So here is 0.4 tank water, in it goes. We then have to add the indicator dye. One, two, three, four. All right, so now instead of filling the syringe up to one, right, remember I, I know that my tank only needs about half a mil uh, for it to show a color stain. So I'm just gonna pick a value that is not one and it's bigger than what I typically use for my test. So you, I could go with 0 0.8, 0 0.7, 0 0.6, but for now I'm just gonna put, uh, start at 0.8. So when I fill my syringe, I'm not gonna go to one as the instruction says, I'm gonna go to 0 0.8, which means that I'm essentially using 20% less reagents. But I'm gonna keep that in mind because when I'm finished my test, I'm going to have to add the difference between where I started and where I should have started according to the instruction. So if I start at 0.8, then I'm gonna to have to add the difference of 0.2, which is one minus 0.8. If I started at 0.3, sorry, if I started at 0.7, then I'm gonna to have to add 0.3 onto the value that I read. But let's just, let's just do the test and, and you'll see what I mean. All right, so here it is. I just loaded the syringe with 0.8 and I'm gonna start the titration test. Okay, it's getting close. It's getting close. There it is, there's the color change. Okay, so that's the color change. Now I read where I am. And the, I am, if you look at the reading here, it's 0.3. So now remember that this is not 0.3 when we read it, we have to take into account that we didn't start at one, we started at 0.8. So we have to add the difference between where you started and where you should have started to the value. So I, I, I'm reading 0.3, but I have to add the difference here, which is 0.2. So the correct value is 0.5, which is exactly what I got using the other tests. So I've just essentially ran this test using 20% less reagents without losing any accuracy, okay? I could have started at 0.7, right? I could have even started at 0.6. So if I, if I started at 0.6, then that means I'm doing a full resolution test while saving 40% of the reagents. So it's almost as good as, as doing the low resolution test here 
with half the reagents and uh, but at lower accuracy. So I think this is a, a great way to save money while still maintaining uh, accuracy and without contaminating your stock solutions. Uh, again, the main point is that it doesn't matter where you start. What matters is how much reagents go into here. And if you could start at lower values, so long as you have enough liquid in the syringe to get to the end point. And, and you know, you, you, you don't want to go exactly, uh, you know, obviously allow some, a little bit of room in case your, uh, increase your, in case your tank shifts, uh, and it's a little bit, uh, higher or lower than, than you expected. But I generally like, I know what my ballpark numbers are and, uh, and I put enough liquid in the syringe, uh, to, uh, to give me like a full DKH, uh, above or below, uh, of what I'm expecting. Uh, so if, if your if your tank is around 7.7, .7, then you could really comfortably start at at 0.7 in a syringe here instead of 0.1. Okay, guys, hopefully this helps. You could do this with any colorimetric assay. Uh, again, you're like with all of these assays, it, it it doesn't really matter what you start what, where you start here. It, it, the the instructions were meant, I, I guess, for the companies to uh, <laughs> to sell you as many kits as possible. But you know, if it doesn't matter where you start, what matters is how much actually goes into here. And if you figure out how much you go goes into here, then you you could easily re figure out the corresponding value in the instructions. Okay, hopefully that wasn't too confusing. Uh, feel free to ask me any questions or, or comments, uh, uh, but this is a, a, a pretty easy way uh, to, to do many, many more tests uh, without uh, compromising the integrity of uh, your kit by contaminating this or by, by uh, having to deal with uh, low resolution tests. Okay, guys, thanks so much. Uh, hope to uh, see you soon. Bye.